Now, in some courses of study, like the International Baccalaureate Program, you have to know what various properties are of period three elements uh, on the periodic table line. And uh, period one, period two, period three starts with sodium, right there, and moving across to magnesium, and then we go aluminum, silicon, and then ending off with phosphorus and sulfur and chlorine. Now, there are some various properties of those chemicals, uh, that you have to know when they combine with others and when they're by themselves as elements. And so here is the brief run through of stuff that for those exams you need to know. So first of all, those are the elements stringing across period three. What is their type of bonding that they have in existence for just the element itself? Well, sodium and magnesium, those are both metals, right? So they have metallic bonding. Remember that's the, the, it's the uh, uh, islands of little protons immersed in a sea of electrons to make uh, metallic properties that also lead to metals being highly conductive and uh, ductile and malleable, right? And uh, lustrous as well. Well, aluminum is also kind of metallic, but now you know that aluminum, of course, now it's shying over there on the periodic table towards the non-metals. So it doesn't have as much metallic properties as you would expect, although aluminum, of course, is a metal. That will come into play when it starts to bond to other chemicals. Now, um, as we go to silicon here, remember that silicon, just like carbon, has network covalent bonding. So that is just what silicon attached to other silicons in those great huge tetrahedrals that form. They form a network that is very, very strong to be able to break apart. Network covalent bonding for that. These guys here, phosphorus, uh, which would be P4, and sulfur is S8, chlorine is diatomic Cl2, they would have just molecular covalent bonding in between uh, their atoms to make those molecules that we just described. So we go from metallic to something that's, that's network covalent and then going toward molecular normal covalent bonding. Okay. What happens when we take those elements then and turn them into chlorides or bond Cl negative to them or just chlorine to them? Well, sodium and magnesium, NaCl and MgCl2, those would be ionic in nature, right? Okay, so what do we get when we get aluminum chloride? Now, aluminum chloride, because aluminum is shined towards the nonmetals, the electronegativity difference between aluminum and chlorine isn't as great as between sodium and magnesium would be with chlorine. That would make a real ionic compound when the electronegativity difference is large. But when the electronegativity difference starts to get smaller, like aluminum would be with chlorine, what actually happens is you get something that's in between being ionic or molecular. So what do you call it? Well, you just call it kind of intermediate between ionic and molecular. Right. Now, what do you get, though, when you put silicon with chlorine? Well, you know what? You do get that kind of intermediate compound. And by the way, that was on a recent exam, recently as 2010, when they said, what is silicon tetrachloride's property in solution? And SiCl4 would be a type of compound that when it dissolves in solution makes an acidic solution. So I just thought I'd tell you about that one. It makes an acidic solution like some of the other nonmetals do when you have uh, 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 chlorides that are dis dissolved in water. Uh, well, I'll show you that in just a second. Now, uh, oxides dissolved in water. <laughs> I'll show you that in a second. So, uh, when you get chlorine, however, bonded to phosphorus for, for making PCl3 or PCl5 or something like that, and sulfur bonded with chlorine, maybe SCl2, chlorine bonded to chlorine making Cl2, those are going to be non-metals bonded together so you're going to get covalent bonds there. So the, the trend going across period three for the chlorides is ionic to intermediate to covalent, the intermediates being the aluminum and the silicon, most specifically the aluminum, the silicon chloride being acidic in solution. Um, oxides. Now, when you bond so, uh, sodium and magnesium to oxygen to make Na2O or MgO, what are you going to get? you're going to get compounds that are ionic. What happens then as we go across? You get something that's intermediate again when aluminum bonds to oxygen as a two negative charge. Silicon oxide or dioxide, SiO2, that's like sand, okay? that is 
SiO2 is a network covalent bond just like normal Si is. So you have to know that SiO2 is network covalent bonding. It's one to memorize. Then as we go across, when oxygen bonds to phosphorus, sulfur, or chlorine to form uh, PO3s or PO4s and SO2s or SO3s and, Cl and OCLs, or OCL2 more specifically, those chemicals are covalently bonded. Okay, now, the properties of those oxides when they go into solution is something you have to know. When a metallic, when an oxide of, like sodium oxide or magnesium oxide, hits water, the O2 negative ion dissociates from the positive ion, and the O2 negative takes a proton from water to form two hydroxide ions in solution for every O2 negative that reacts. So here's the point. The property of metallic oxides is that they're bases. Now, as we get these guys that are kind of intermediate be from being uh, 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 ionic or, or covalent, when we have Al2O3, which is sounds like an ionic compound, but it's kind of an intermediate ionic compound to ionic and molecular, that's amphoteric. It can act acidically or basically, and because aluminum, Al3 positive, is a large charge cation, it reacts with water and turns into a really weird complex, right? It's actually a uh, a hexa aqua aluminum 3 positive ion, <laughs> and that ion is going to be acidic in solution, Al3 positive. But then the O2 negative makes hydroxide. It's not totally self canceling in terms of being uh, 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 neutral in solution, but the point is that's, that solution does have, and that chemical does have, amphoteric properties of being both acid and base. Silicon uh, is going to, uh, with uh, the property of the silicon dioxide in solution is that, well, basically that's just sand, so don't even worry about that one. But when P, S, and Cl have those oxides that we just talked about, those oxides are acidic because when they hit water, they turn into phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, stuff like that. So the deal is that the nonmetals make acids, the metals as oxides, the, the metallic oxides make bases, and the ones in the middle, amphoteric, not SiO2 though, that's, that's like sand. 